Hey guys, welcome back to JQ's World. Today I'm going to be reviewing a game today, a game that everyone anticipated that's going to be the new best thing. I was hyped for this game, I was thrilled to play this game because it's been a while since it made an actual good fighting game. And that game, of course, is Dragon Ball Z Fighter. This game recently came out yesterday. And I played it. I have some gripes with this game. And I obviously I'm going to compare this game. With Budokai 3. The only reason why I'm going to compare these, these two games. Because I'm going to compare what this game did right. And what this game did wrong. And what they could have done to make it one perfect game together. So, obviously, with that, that's like with the, the Season Pass one. So, I get the Season Pass characters, and I get to unlock Super Saiyan, um, God Goku, or just call him Blue Goku, I guess. But, this is a pre-order. I mean, this is whack. I would rather have this type of pre-order, a Hennessy bottle. I would rather have this than, than this little crap. A thing that could break easily. But, anyhow. That's besides the point. Now, I want to like this game, but I'll give you the problem with the game, okay? The first thing that already kills it for me in the beginning is the option menu. The option menu should be simple and easy to use. It should be you should be choosing whatever you want to do. You could choose story mode, you could choose versus mode, you could choose online mode. And all these other good things. But what they decided to do, which was kind of lame for me, is they give you these little avatars, basically like these little figurines. And like this shit comes out easily, but anyway. These little figurines in the game, and any character that's in the game, and they just start walking around. You could choose to walk towards... Um, tutorial, walk to go to story mode, walk to go to versus mode, walk to go to online, but it takes a long time. I mean, for me, it takes a while because there's a small little thing going all the way over there. When a single button, you could just choose what you want to do. I don't know why they did that. It would have been perfect if they chose to do that on online. That would be perfect. Just online with it that you could go spectate people fighting. You can go and... Go online, go to tournament mode, or tutorials of how to play the game. Perfect, but in story mode or in versus mode, they shouldn't just kept it as separate menus. And then once you go to online mode, you can do all that what they did in the beginning. That's my first gripe with the game. Other people like it, other people don't. That's just my opinion. I really don't like that choice they made. Then to top it off is... Mm, the voice actors don't seem... Like, how do I say? There are some certain parts there that they miss. That you remember when Goku blasts Vegeta when... Ve I mean, Vegeta, I mean, Fre Frieza, that when he shoots him behind, he goes around, turns around, he calls him, you fool, and then destroys him. But this time around, he calls him a moron. I'm like, wait, what? I don't remember that. He's like, you moron! Ah! No, no. I, I really don't remember that from the show. But, I mean... Some of the voice actors, you can see them trying or not trying it's just it doesn't feel like the show a little bit it really doesn't feel like the show the environment on the background is beautiful that's one thing i will say actually first thing let me get rid of the negativity and then i'll give it a positivity all right the next negativity are the specials the specials are good but it just doesn't seem like an easy way to pull it off like on the previous Budokai, you could just press a certain type of combo and then let go of the special. And then you see this animation and everything like that. But sometimes the animation only comes out on certain parts. Then you see the world destroyed or this and that. But it's either a finish or that's it. And I really didn't like it how they did it this time around. Now, this is one of the gripes that got me a lot. When I, when I pre-ordered the game... And it came with Super Saiyan God Goku, Super Saiyan God on Vegeta. I was wondering to myself, I'm like, why they put them as a slot option? Why? 
why is that an option? Seriously, I don't understand that at all. You just wasted two slot options to put the same character but with blue hair. What was wrong what they did with, with Budokai? If you start from level one, you go to Super Saiyan, you go to Super Saiyan. No, sorry. You go to normal, you go to Kaioken, you go to Super Saiyan 1, you go to Super Saiyan 2, you go to Super Saiyan 3, and then you go to Super Saiyan 4. But we're not going to count it because that game does not acknowledge that at all. So you could have had Super Saiyan God Goku. But you decided just to keep him already in Super Saiyan form. That is it, dumb. That's a dumb option. You have the time to build up a meter and then turn it to a Super Saiyan. Turn it to whatever form of Super Saiyan you want to do. But what the gamers and the developers decide to do is to just keep it as a special move. Only one character has that ability and that's Golden Frieza. See, they did that with him, but with everybody else, no, fuck it, no. You stay in that form you're in, period. I do not like that option. I really don't like that. I like the option that you could charge, build up, and turn. Because it just seems like if you're already in that mode, whatever tactic you do, whatever hits or combos you do, it won't do that extra damage. Then you turn. That's what's the point of feeling a little bit like a Super Saiyan God. That you have this God-like power. The only way for me, like they did in the previous game, if your meter is low and you get knocked out, you lose and you have to rebuild that again. They shouldn't just kept that and left that alone. I don't know why was that complicated to get rid of and just keep him already in the form. No. Make him build that form. Make him earn that form. But they took that completely away, wasted two slots on the same character, only with blue hair. They could do different type of combos, but it's still the same character with just different movesets. They still do the same thing. And then this is another thing that pissed me off about the game. When you pull the combo, there's sometimes... You don't even have to pull the combo. If they're already close to death... I'll give you an example. And Trunks slashes you with his sword. And automatically at the end of the round, he does a special where he slashes you and then burns you alive. That could have been like a combo to do or anything like that. I mean, I respect what they were trying to do, but it just seems easier to pull off. Now, if they, he would have pulled the combo and then with that, then it would have been a dramatic finish. But they decided to do, okay, slash him once and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it sounds easier, but it doesn't seem like you work to do that special, you know? Like in previous game, Marvel vs. Capcom or Street Fighter, if you do a Hadoukis or whatever crap and you hit him and he dies with that, okay, dramatically death. I don't know, they just, they really ruined it. And there are some specials that are questionable. Like, some of the people do exactly the same special. I'm like, how come some of these characters don't have the spirit bomb? And some, I expect the Cell to have at least a spirit bomb since Goku has some other crap. And for, I haven't seen the Dragon Fist at all. Maybe in Super Saiyan God Blue does the Dragon Fist, but you don't see the actual dragon and the fist like going through... Or anything like that. I'm like, why they took that away? The Dragon Fist was like the most powerful move that... Well, second powerful move that Goku had besides the Spirit Bomb. And they took the Spirit Bomb away unless you do it maybe at a certain ending again. If you want to do Super... I mean, Spirit Bomb, you do it immediately. Ah, <sighs> Another thing. Some of, the, some of the characters are not there. There's like background character example. 18. Android 18, even though I don't know why they call her Android 18, and she's not an Android anymore, she's 18 now, but they decided to call her that, which is another thing I don't understand, they did that in story mode, but Android 18 with with 17, they do combos together, and they do a, a, a nice special, but they should have not done that special, they should have kept the classic special, how they kill Gohan, basically. And they're up in the end, they're shooting him on the floor beside beam, side to side and shooting the beam together like that. They shouldn't have kept that. If they wanted to keep that, they should have just kept that for 18 and Krillin to do that beam from side to side would have been perfect. And then for 17, would have had kept the classic, you know, Gohan murdering scene when they're up in the air and they're shooting them down on the ground. They should have just done that. But it, it just seems like the developers are just being lazy. And, I, and I'm not even close to tell you how lazy these fucking developers are. I thought, you know, Dragon Ball Z would learn 
from other previous mistakes from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Street Fighter, and maybe a little bit, just a little bit on Injustice. But they did not learn from any of those previous mistakes of those fighting um, games. And what they gave us now, I'm moving on to the story mode. What the fuck, people? Really? This is it? This is what we've been waiting for? Dude, I don't even know where to begin with the story mode, to be honest. With Freaking Budokai 1! No, I take that back. Not even Budokai 1. Their cutscene from Budokai 3 has some awesome fight scene. Cut scene. You're trying to say in 2018, 2018, you, with those lovely graphics and everything, show you can show the good fighting scene with them. This Japanese game should go should have gone all out with the story mode, with them beating the shit out of each other or anything. And but they just kept it from them just talking to one another, using cliches, foreshadowing things and. That doesn't seem like Dragon Ball. That's why Dragon Ball Super is like getting already, I call it, it's finishing on March. Obviously because it got boring. It, it's not fun. It's not like the world is in danger compared to what they did with the with Frieza, the Cell Saga, and the Majin Buu Saga. Those felt very, you know, dangering episodes and that's why they lasted long. But with this one, it's Super Saiyan, I mean, Dragon Ball Z Super, it just seems like the Super Saiyan God power that they so-called have doesn't mean shit to them like seriously i'm like if you're called a god you should be able to wipe these motherfuckers out with one single punch but why call that a god if, if, if freaking simple characters like 18 could even kick your god like power away like nothing 17 kicked it out of the way and i'm like ugh. well continuing with the story mode the story mode is basically is clones of each character and there's some random spirit controlling each other character and they have to let themselves get controlled by the spirit for they can have their full power. What the fuck were they thinking? What the hell were they smoking? Basically, would you like to know who the spirit is? The player. You're the spirit. You're the one going into these bodies and talking and communicating with them. No. Come on, man. Was that the best thing you guys had? I wouldn't accept it perfectly fine if it was no spirit, but just, okay, there's clones of each character. They get stronger every time or anything like that. And they have to work together because they have to explain for some reason this new Android 21 found a way to fuse himself with Majin Buu. I mean, Kid Buu and have these abilities, but... That's not even explained perfectly how was she able to do that. And then the final boss. This Android 21 that's a fusion of... Oh, fucking Android and, and Majin Buu. They do exactly the same moves like Kid Buu or Majin Buu. Turning people to candy. Throwing bombs. I'm like... She's not menacing. She's not threatening. She's just a brat. For God's sake, even Majin Buu was scary. When he gets frustrated and pissed off. This one is just a joke, man. It's a chore. And this bitch is easy to kill. Regardless, she is fucking easy to fucking kill. <sighs> the last thing I have to say is the arcade mode. I thought that should be simple. You know, beat up every single character until you reach to the ending. Then you get an ending cutscene. But no, they even made arcade stupid for some reason. So every time you get good at the arcade, they move you from either easy mode to medium and to a high difficulty, depending how good you are. And depending how good you are, they can even put you on hard mode that you're going to get your ass kicked. Regardless, you should have the option to rather play on easy mode, normal mode, or hard mode, but they decided to be like, okay, every time you win, you're going to have rank up higher, and the AI is going to be even three times more stronger. I know you're supposed to, you know, advance every time you, you know, beat a game, but let the people choose whatever they want. You can't just do that automatically because then people are going to get frustrated, throw the game away, like, fuck, I can't even beat the arcade mode. I can't even do that. 
All right, so that's basically all the rants I can say about this game. There might be some people that agree with me, maybe other people that don't agree with me. Now, I will say the positive side about this game. I have said a lot of negativity, but now I'm going to move on to the positive of this game. Okay, so let me grab you. What they did right about this game. The number one, the artwork is perfect. It is so fucking beautiful. Oh, wait. Let me go back to one negativity left that I forgot to mention. Sorry, I will go back to the, to the nice things, but let me, there's one more negativity. Why the fuck can these characters fly? Budokai 3 made these characters fly. The previous game made these characters fly. Why in this game can't they fly? Why are they obligated to stay on the floor? They have godlike powers, or not even Super Saiyan powers, or normal, and they should be able to fly. But no, they had they're strict to has to stay down on the ground. Why? If this game managed to do it, in this game, how old is this game again? Please tell me how old are you, further than I could tell them. Freaking, I'm going to take a random guess, 12 years ago, or maybe more. The minute you kick your character up in the air, you guys are already up in the air flying. You continue doing basically battles on the, it seems like you're doing battles on the ground, but you're up in the air. Because that's what makes a Dragon Ball Z like. And in this game, when people throw projectiles, you can smack the crap out of it because they can throw like five projectiles. You can smack it either back to your opponent or just smack it out of your way. But in this one, in this game, it's really hard to do that. Really freaking hard. And you can't fly in this goddamn game. Why can't you fly in this other game you can fly? You shouldn't at least give the players option when you knock them up in the air. You no, know, they can stay up in the air and just continue flying. And then when they teleport each time, they hit you on the back. They hit you up there. They hit you down here. They hit you down here. But they left it as special, but not that you're... They can only do that once once in this new game why in the other game you could do it four times you could teleport here kick him over there kick him down here kick him up there again that's what dragon Ball z is all about to go all out but in this game they disregard that and they just kept most of the character down on the ground which is a pretty lame ass idea to do okay now i finally got rid of the negativity going back to the positive the positive the artwork in this game is gorgeous and fantastic. I will give credit where credit is due. The artwork in this game is beautiful. I never seen any good artwork in this in previous um, Dragon Ball Z game. And this one in Budokai, um, they had the artwork, but they kept it mostly towards the show than the actual gameplay. Now in this one, the artwork, the background is gorgeous. It's beautiful. The music, the soundtrack, kicks ass. It is so much better than this one they had. They only had like one or two good tracks in the Budokai franchise. But this one has a shitload of good music for you can find on the background. Even silly music, that's still fun to hear and beat the crap out of each other. The characters they chosen in there are obviously perfect. They made Yamcha more better than Budokai. They made Tien awesome. They made freaking, um, how you call this character? Majin Buu better. Kid Buu, they made him awesome, which I'm so confused how come they didn't put the regular Buu there. They only had the fat Buu and the kid Buu, but not the medium one. I think they should have kept the medium one for then he can absorb and turn to each other character, which was cool in the previous game, but I guess they didn't want to do that. They were decided to give the two same characters into one, which is pretty stupid. Um, let me see what else pos positive things that I have. The fighting movement is good. It's not as fast as its predecessor, but it's still solid and still good when they're beating the crap out of each other. And it reminds me a little bit of a Marvel vs. Capcom game, but just a little bit more fast and a little bit more fluent. 
but then again everyone can just learn how to play this game just by pressing the same buttons over and over or just you can actually beat somebody by pressing random buttons that's how easy this game is you can literally beat beat anybody by pressing random buttons i press random button and i already do level four level five i mean level yeah level three level one specials or whatnot and i'm like it's not really challenging. You can't learn new things every time. You just have to press one button or the same combo or random shit and you still win. <sighs> Sorry, that's a, that was a rant. But, I mean, like I said, the only, that's big, I don't really have too much positive things going on with this game. The only thing I could say, if possible, which is still not... When the DLCs arrive, hopefully they're good DLCs. Even though... I think they should have kept the DLC separate. I mean, from the regular roster. They should have kept Beerus, um, Gen, whatever you call this character, as DLC and just gave us characters that. Because I know who they're going to give us automatically. I'm already predicting who they're going to give us. They're going to give us Hercule. We need a funny character, but I don't know why they didn't just keep him there to begin with. They're going to give us Brawly, or female Brawly, either one of the two. They might just give us both, even though they're the same fucking character. They might maybe give us Vegeta's brother, which is, again, same character, just younger, I guess. And they might just give us one of the fusion characters of Goku and Vegeta, fusion form. Or with the ear piercing. I don't know what they're going to give us. If they do manage to, just, for, just to either piss off the fan or fan favorite... To put Super Saiyan 4, Goku, and Vegeta in there, that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's going to be fucking hilarious if they actually do that. But there, well, if you want the verdict of this game. <sighs> for me, the story mode was bad. I'm not going to lie, the story mode was horrible. I was actually looking forward to this because... The way they build it up on the trailer made it look like a badass that Goku could finally be defeated by somebody in the show or something like that. Even though Goku always gets help from people, he never wins the battles on his own. Besides just one time with Frieza, but other than that, everything else, he gets his ass kicked or whatever. But he... I, don't... I know I'm going to get help from this, but I'm going to be honest. This game... This game... Should not be a sixty dollar game. Should not be a six. This should be at least a forty dollar game. They said they're gonna work really hard to beat the. I mean, to beat the other predecessors' game, Injustice, and more. Um, Mortal Kombat and Marvel's Capcom Infinite. So far, this game has not lived to the expectation that I thought it would be. I can even say that Injustice is better because the story mode at least is decent and better. Each of the characters better, but here it just seems like they wasn't trying. I thought in 2018 they would put more work to it, they would give a better story mode, give it more action scene like we see in the show into a fucking video game. But no, they decided to take the easy round, just make some bullshit story without even them even touching each other. Maybe one blast and that's it, but... I don't know. It was just done for me. So the final verdict for this game. And this was had been my longest review. But I had to give you every single detail in the game. For then you know what to expect in it. The final verdict to this game. Is a 6 out of 10. It's an average game for me. Really average game. I expected more out of it. I really really expected more out of this game. But unfortunately we just got this. And we just got to put up with it for now. Hopefully, if they decide to make a sequel to this or whatever, they do a better job and listen to the fans of Dragon Ball Z that we are and do what they did good in the previous game. You know what they should do? They should make another Budokai game. Or or Dragon Ball Z fight a sequel. But make it more into this. Believe me, this one is much more fun than this one. And I have done gameplays on this, and this is so much fun. When you transform, when you do your special, when you do your combos, when you blast people with your lasers, when you have other things and teleporting, you're so much faster and fluent than this one. Than in that one. If they can combine these two games together, give us a good-ass story mode, 
with cutscenes, fight scenes, you have the technology to do it, just don't lack in it. Make them fight, make them fly in the air when you're showing a story mode. Make them do something interesting. And give us the choice and the ability that they can transform into whatever they want to and don't waste two slots on a character. It just seems dumb. It's the same character with different hair color and just different moveset, but it's not. It's not. It's not waste. It's a waste of two slots to put other characters in there. But alright, guys. Hopefully you enjoy this. Please comment that. Subscribe to JQ's World. If you guys have any other game, would you like me to review? Leave it in the comment below. I will be reviewing Injustice Two because I think it's about time I review. I didn't do a, a review of the game because of the circumstances and I'm gonna review that game because I finally absorbed everything I needed to absorb of that game and then I'll give you a perfect review telling you if it's worth buying it or not. Alrighty guys take care and have a good night. See you soon.